Today we have with us Kerala's leading businessman, philanthropist and author, Mr. Kochosip Chitlapilli for an exclusive interview with Kerala Travel Explorer. You have been a successful serial entrepreneur starting with Vigard Stabilizers in 1977, which laid the foundation for the diversified group of Vigard Industries Limited today. When you set up your first enterprise in 1977 to manufacture voltage stabilizers, did you ever imagine that it would grow over the years to include a diversified portfolio like you have now, ranging from electrical appliances to amusement parks, flats and apartments plus a resort? What do you attribute your success to? In fact, when I started my business that was in 1977, uh, that was a humble beginning. Now my intention was to uh, to start something of my own because i was working in a small company that time in trivandrum uh, and that company was not doing well so my future became a question mark so i decided to start something so i selected stabilizer as my first product uh, initially it was a very tiny industry just two workers uh, but Uh, somehow people uh, customers accepted my product of course there were some special features into those products which i started initial stages uh, the beginning was so humble that i used to i cannot claim uh, it is fully my merit because you now as you know voltage uh, stabilizer was uh, mainly because of the voltage fluctuate fluctuation Uh, that way i think government used to help me <laughs> because of the electricity department uh, the because of the fluctuation you are a gifted soul who made a success of every venture you have set up so we are curious to know your thoughts about the concept of midas touch actually there yeah, i believe there is no midas touch uh, no there were failures there were definitely number of failures you know if i start talking about failures it will be a long list but of course i believe any successful enterprises whether it is vigard or our amusement park or our anything i believe the quality consciousness and straightforward attitude in our dealings in our approach in our products in our after sales service the how we are dealing with our customers our raw material suppliers our stakeholders distributors all our matters uh, i believe there is no midas touch i believe in quality you have been a pioneer with the initiative to build wandala amusement parks how did you come to conceive it tell us the story behind it uh, actually uh, that was started uh, inaugurated in the year 19 2000 that means by that time 23 years were over after starting vigard in between in vigard itself we had a number of products we expanded our marketing in other states tamil nadu and uh, all over south india by that time we had number of managers engineers so uh, they are uh, uh, doing extremely well in the management side as well as in the engineering side i always believe in people i always believe in people i give a lot of freedom to our my people my engineers my managers so even in my absence vigard is uh, growing themselves so i decided to diversify into something so in between i used to travel abroad once in a while that time my children were young school going so for their sake i used to take them to disneyland or universal studio any uh, other amusement parks abroad so i thought why can't we start something a similar in a small scale in kochi that was the thought uh, and it took around 3 years to uh, to finalize it and inaugurate it in 2000 it was inaugurated so around 20 years are already over that also the vicard corporate office is a fine example of eco sustainable practices 
Can you tell us more about the inspiration and idea behind that creation? Uh, so, uh, actually, it is nothing but uh, I was born and brought up in a village. I studied in a village school. Uh, my parents were into agriculture. So, um, I lived my childhood days in a village. I like greenery, I love greenery. So, when I decided to construct a uh, corporate office, even not only corporate office of Vega, whether it is if you go to Wanderla, there you can see a lot of greenery. When we decided to construct uh, the Vigard corporate office, I decided, okay, you know, we can have huge buildings, but definitely those buildings, if there is a lot of greenery, definitely it will be helpful, no? not only uh, to the look wise, but even to the, the health wise to our staff members. So, what we did all around, uh, there will be a veranda. Uh, all around there will be a, a, a small, small plants. And I selected all the plants, uh, very, very ordinary plants, which requires very minimum maintenance, less maintenance, very, uh, very local. Uh, so, that was a big success uh, in the sense, initially uh, the architects were very, very reluctant, okay, whether this will sustain and uh, if it is not sustained, then it will be, it looks shabby, the whole building will look shabby. But for your information, more than uh, 10, 12 years are already over, uh, it is still looking good and happy, yeah. In 2011, you made headlines when you donated one of your kidneys to a truck driver. And with that noble act, you started an organ donor chain where the family members of the recipient had to donate an organ themselves too. How is the movement shaping up? Are there more people willing to donate their organs now? Yeah, we, we are talking around, around 9 years back, 9 to 10 years back. I took a decision, okay, I... Uh, decided to donate one of my kidneys. The, the, the reason was uh, one of my distant relative had this problem of kidney problem. So, I was watching from outside what are their you know, complications, you know, the family is struggling to get a donor because uh, the patient was a lady. Uh, his, uh, her uh, uh, husband was a heart patient, so he cannot donate. Uh, her daughter was healthy, but uh, they were uh, the group were not matching. So they were forced to find out a, a donor from outside the family. So I was in uh, I was observing from outside what is happening in their family. So I used to discuss in my house. Uh, no, I can't uh, donate one of my kidneys to anybody. After all, at the same time, if you discuss with uh, any nephrologist or any doctor, they say that if you are healthy, of course you must be healthy. Uh, if you are healthy, nothing wrong in donating one of your uh, kidneys, but of course you must be healthy. Then I thought, why can't I prove that uh, myself is healthy even at the age of 60? I donated at the age of 60. So I, I was able to prove. I am healthy at the age of 60 to donate one of my kidneys to a truck driver. And I used to say it is an old kidney, that means it is 60 years old. And I am happy that truck driver is still driving his truck with this old spare part. I am really happy. And more than that, I could convey a message to the public, to the society. This is not a big issue, this is possible. And I have already completed nine years. I am still healthy. I can do any type of work, uh, just like any other person. Uh, medical science explains that nothing wrong in donating one of your kidneys. But at the same time, uh, people are reluctant to, um, because of fear. Uh, so I could give a message to the public. Uh, this is very simple. This is possible. This, so, and so that way I could communicate uh, that particular message, uh, this is possible. 
You became an author with your first book, Practical Wisdom, in 2005, which is an account of practical management techniques you derive from your personal experiences, and then went to make it a trilogy with two more editions of it in 2010 and 2012. In between, you also published your autobiography in Malayalam, titled Down Memory Lane, in 2011. How do you find time for such passions with a busy lifestyle like yours? Uh, telling frankly, when I was studying in school as well as college, uh, language was not my favorite thing. I was more into technology. Language was a fear in the sense my grammar is always wrong, my, my phrases will be always wrong. So, so uh, the beginning was I used to write a column in, my, in our We Guard in-house magazine. So every time uh, the manager, the HR manager used to request me to write some column in, in the in-house magazine. Uh, then after many years, he, uh, he came and told me, Sir, uh, you have, we have published so many articles uh, about you, you know, by, uh, written by you, so why can't we publish it as a book? So by that time, five years were already over. So they compiled it and edited it and polished it. They put some caricature and all. Finally, they brought out as uh, the first practical wisdom. Again, I was writing in the in the uh, in-house magazine, and again after five years, they said uh, again there is a set of articles. Finally, another sixty numbers of articles as practical wisdom two. So in between, uh, uh, I got a person who helped me. Uh, in fact, I, I never wrote the bio, the biography. Somebody else wrote it. I gave a dictation, and uh, he brought a printout, and I edited, and uh, that has come out as Ormakli Vadil, and uh, and the second part also as Ormagal Lekiru Yatra. Uh, then finally, uh, after my kidney donation, one more book as the gift that was in English. That again, somebody else supported me to write. Uh, I used to narrate it as just like this. I used to uh, give oral uh, instructions. They record it. Uh, they bring it in a reasonable form. But I'm very sure that my English or Malayalam is very simple. It must be in a very simple language because I don't know much uh, vocabulary or literature. So if you go through any of my books, it will be in very simple language, whether it is in Malayalam or English. Uh, so that is the, the, the history of bringing out four or five books of my own. Please tell us about K. Chidilapalli Foundation, the non-profit organization founded by you that is engaged in charitable and philanthropic activities. What are its main areas I of actually, focus and activities? Years back, I decided to start a trust Kachitlapalli Foundation to help uh, needy people. Uh, we are ma giving mainly uh, trust to uh, uh, mainly for poor people for their medical support. Now I used to say if both the fam both the members of the family are healthy, it is easy to earn their livelihood. I know because in Kerala you will get at least 600 rupees or 800 rupees per head. So if the, both of them are working, definitely you need not support them. At the same time, if any one of them are sick, then it's a question mark. So they, uh, if we are supporting number of people, especially in the below poverty line, uh, in the medical side, and we are supporting children again in the below poverty line for their education. Uh, then, then the, the next thing is housing. Housing is again a, is a question, uh, especially the number of people still um, in, in and around us. Uh, they have no shelter, so they, we are supporting for housing schemes. So that is going on regularly basis. 
You're the chairman of the straight dog-free movement and advocated government action to address the menace of Kerala. Have you noticed any discernible improvement since you began this movement? Uh, in fact, uh, years back, I noticed, uh, you know, we were getting number of applications to our KJW Foundation requesting for help, medical help. And when we go through the details, it is noted that, okay, uh, uh, stray dog bitten cases, uh, stray dog hit uh, uh, two wheeler accidents, accidents. So that uh, uh, disturbed me in the sense why it is like that. And so whenever you go abroad, you never see stray dogs anywhere openly in the public spaces. Uh, we are talking about uh, animal lovers, we are talking about animal loving, but Wherever you go, whether it is U.S. or U.K. or um, Europe, uh, nowhere you can see stray dogs in the open street. So that means uh, at the same time some celebrities like some film stars, they, they propagate uh, animal love. Uh, I am also an animal lover. I used to have dogs in my house. Uh, I was born and brought up in a village. Uh, I am also an animal lover. but. I don't, I don't want stray dogs in the road and biting very ordinary people. And somebody is not having a proper compound world. Uh, the stray dogs, they attack their, uh, their small children, their poultry uh, farms, uh, the, their cattle. So uh, nobody is raising any, any uh, against this particular menace. So I started uh, propagating this message, but uh, sad to say that so far um, there is no much, uh, much uh, progress in this aspect. When I analyzed, uh, central government uh, brought out a, a role uh, protecting this type of uh, creatures. Uh, I s believe it is quite absurd. You know, in the sense, I, it is one way. It is helping the, uh, telling frankly, it is helping the the uh, mafia. Mafia. Uh, I, I have to confess that it is helping the the medical, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies. It is a, actually there is a mafia in it. Uh, that much I can tell you. If you have time, you please and go around that. India is a place where maximum quantity of rabi vaccines are sold. Why? Why it is like that? Because of stray dogs. So all the pharmaceutical companies are funding some agencies and they want you know, stray dogs be there in the public spaces. That is a very complex issue. We fought uh, tooth and nail in many forums. Even in the, in, the, in the judiciary also, we filed a number of cases, but we miserably fail in the sense uh, it is the duty of the government to, uh, to, uh, to create law. So, but the law is uh, against uh, in this aspect. So that much I can say. How is a typical day in your life today and how is it different in comparison to the early years when you were setting up your first business venture? You know, that is uh, early years, that time I was only uh, 27 years old, so I have a uh, lot of energy. So I used to spend a lot of time um, for, uh, you know, in the business. I spent a lot of time in the office, the factories. I used to reach uh, the, in the office and factory by 9 o'clock. But now uh, time has passed. Mm, now we have, as I said earlier, I have a number of managers, I have a number of uh, engineers or whatever may be. Uh, I have, I can delegate to the maximum level. Uh, so I have enough time even to do some charity activities or social activities. But uh, I have to be active so long as I am healthy. That is my principle. And uh, now. Uh, this year I am completing 69, still healthy, uh, I, am, I am productive, that means I spend my time very fruitful. 
please tell us about your family especially your wife and your two sons and how do they help you to run your business empire uh, yeah yeah my, all of my <clears throat> family members are active in the business uh, my wife is active in another business we have a garment division we start creation she is in charge of that i have no role in do it uh, because i have no idea about fashion and all i am not into that line so she is managing that show uh, we got this uh, managed by my second son mithun wonderla is managed by uh, arun my the elder son and then uh, their wives are also active into respective businesses and so in my family all of them are engaged one way or other i have uh, two grandchildren uh one each one for arun one for mithun so i am comfortable your wife is a successful entrepreneur as well what are the lessons that you have learned from each other uh that you have to ask her to know about that but uh, i used to say everybody everybody must be engaged then only uh, there will not be any gossip in the family because you know there is no time for gossip because all are active all are running around with their own uh, activities i am also running around with my own activities she is also running around with her own activities similarly sansar busy with their own um, businesses uh. could you share some key success mantras to young aspiring entrepreneurs who would like to set up a business in kerala uh you know we cannot uh, tell a single line you know for that actually for your information we started a, f- a moment uh, uh, as vijay bhava as a training program for young entrepreneurs to improve their skills uh, started by kechitlapalli foundation it actually i forgot to mention uh, the activities of kechitlapalli foundation it is one Uh, Vijay Bhava is a training program for entre- entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, uh, very low-level entrepreneurs. The whole idea: how to take your company to the next level. That is the idea. So, what we are uh, giving some tips. Mm, uh, no, the government is saying, okay, you you start business, uh, then uh, you can become a multi-millionaire. No, there are so many things hidden in between. if you want to be successful uh, there are some tips uh, from my experience not only from my experience i bring some of my friends who are successful in the business they, they also interacting with them i bring uh, some leading consultants to share their experiences some effective trainers to them uh, to teach them some skills so then only uh, uh, we can uh, uh, take the company to the next level for example i changed a lot after starting my company later only i came to know that i have to improve myself uh, then only i can take my company to the next level so i had i attended numerous similar training programs those days years back when i was young so i am trying to give a idea to youngsters Uh, how to take your company to the next level that is called vijay bhava mm. what are your future plans on the business side uh, no much future plans you know now i have to retire and uh, you know uh, uh, we uh, but i must be engaged that's why uh, i started the 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 four, our fourth division the construction uh, that we gal and developers now we are into construction um i am more involved into that uh so so one by one uh, the f- i have to be engaged for the time being i am engaged are you planning any new forays to share your other passions which you have not yet publicized no uh, that i cannot disclose to you you know <laughs> in the sense uh, you know again i am repeating um, i cannot sit idle i cannot sit idle so um, i am using my valuable time in a productive manner 
whether it is into business or construction or whether it is Wanderla or we got, I give directions, that is all. For example, in Wanderla or we got, I never involve in the day to day life, uh, the day to day activities of the companies, both the companies are listed companies. But in the board meetings, in the, in the planning meetings, I can contribute according to my knowledge. I used to tell them I am quite old, uh, now the technology has changed. When I started my business, the technology was totally different, whether it is electronics or whether it is. Uh, IT was not at all there, IT was not at all there. So, so now if you want to take the company to the next level, we have to inject a lot of IT in, in the marketing side, in the production and in the, so we must be on your toes, we must be on our toes because you know, we are on a treadmill. So treadmill is always moving, it is a, not in your control. It is moving fast. You are also you, you are also uh, have to move fast. Otherwise, uh, there will be a fall. So that is the message I can give to my youngsters. You actively engage in social media. We would like you to share your personal views on the potential of social media and its positive and negative impacts on modern day society. Uh, in fact, uh, very recently only uh, my Facebook became very popular. I have around 7 lakh people following my page, Facebook. Uh, initial days, and I was not that active into, into uh, uh, Facebook. But later on, I decided, okay, if you want to communicate a message, it is better to have a forum. Uh, a space like uh, Facebook, then I also uh, started posting my views about one particular issue or my opinion about one particular uh, answer, whether it is social or political or any uh, anything. I used to post my version. People started following that and slowly it became, uh, as I said, 7 lakhs people. So it is a commitment in the sense I have to, I have to uh, give my ideas on and off. Uh, but I never uh, talk about my personal life, uh, whether I am sitting in a restaurant, no. Uh, whether I am eating this food, no. Only social issues, political issues, I used to share my views, that's all. It is continuing. You have been a globetrotter. Which are your most favorite travel destinations in the world and what is so special about them? Uh, for your information, I, I keep a, a, a YouTube channel account also. I used to share my travelogue. I used to create a travelogue uh, for say 15 to 20 minutes for every journey. So if you ask me which is the favorite place, I believe all the places are good. All, place, all the places are different. We, whenever you go to any country, you can learn or you can experience something different in that place, their culture, their philosophy, their attitude. Uh, that way we can uh, enhance our knowledge, our, you know, our culture. Uh, we can improve our, uh, our knowledge level. That's why I am traveling. I like traveling. In Kerala, what are your favorite getaways or holiday destinations? Uh, Kerala, uh, no, because of the proximity, I used to travel to Monar very frequently. Uh, nothing but because of the, the, the destination, uh, the location-wise proximity. Uh, Mona, uh, Kerala is a you know, blessed place, I used to say, because we have uh, backwaters, we have uh, beaches, we have uh, hill stations uh, very close by, you know, whenever you, so for example, from Ernakulam, uh, Kochi, within few hours you can reach beach uh, resorts, within few hours you can reach uh, backwaters, within few hours you can reach hill stations, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful state, within a short distance and a lot of greenery. I believe we are not utilizing it properly. Uh, anyway, but there are uh, there are progress 
Dorisam. What do you think needs to be done to further promote the potential of Kerala tourism? In different forums, in every forums, I used to give direction, uh, I used to advise or my opinion. After all, what we need, we have to create infrastructure. Look at our roads uh, and the uh, traffic congestions. Now, whenever you go abroad, when you, whenever you visit uh, any uh, uh, tourist places, uh, the infrastructure is quite important. We have no good roads, we cannot reach very fast. And one thing is infrastructure as far as roads, bridges and so on. The other one is cleanliness. Okay, we are far, far better than North India, that is quite sure. But still our beaches, our backwaters, we can, after all we are claiming that we are 100% literate, but, uh, but at the same time our civic sense, you know, whenever you go abroad and you can see that the civic sense, the, the uh, road discipline um, and the, and the, again the, uh, the garbage uh, uh, dealing, uh, these are the areas we have to improve ourselves. That way government uh, have to play a major role into it. Individuals cannot take. Government has to take initiative uh, as far as the, the littering as well as garbage, the cleanliness, beaches, the backwaters. Uh, if government and all of us take that much uh, initiative, definitely we can improve ourselves as far as tourism is concerned. That is my thinking. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice interview. Good, good, Thanks, yeah, good. Yeah, good. That was the story of Mr. Good Joseph Chitlapalli, a man who is not just a successful individual, but one who serves as an inspiration to many. If you like this video, keep watching Kerala Travel Explorer.